tumor treating field therapy uh, is approved in glioblastoma. It has shown efficacy in at least one thoracic neoplasm, malignant pleural mesothelioma, and there is some in vitro and in vivo activity in non-sponsor lung cancer and some early clinical data in non-sponsor lung cancer. The vast majority of patients with brain metastasis, developed brain metastasis, consequential to non-sponsor lung cancer. In the preclinical models that were initially tested, one of the intriguing observations in this murine model was that if a tail vein injection of uh, tumor cells was administered, especially tumor cells that would home to both lungs in the thorax and then grow out using essentially the lungs as a petri dish, you could demonstrate with the application of TT fields to the thorax that there would be a reduction in the total metastatic burden in both lungs. The implication here is that microscopic disease that showers into a compartment can be precluded from growing out as a metastatic lesion. With the brain, when we get brain metastasis in patients, what we notice is that typically when there is one, there are more. You may not always see them. The reason being that you may see one, two, or three, or a certain number of brain metastases, and increasingly these are being treated with very focal therapies, like radiosurgery, for example. But then you have the rest of the brain that has been exposed to a bolus of microscopic tumor cells that over time are going to grow out and develop new brain metastasis. So this remains a challenge, and in some studies, anywhere from 60 to 80% of the patients treated with focal therapies like surgery or stereotactic radiosurgery go on to develop failure in the brain. The idea is to use tumor treating fields to try and obviate the need for further therapy. Historically, we've used whole brain radiation for this purpose, but whole brain radiation induces cognitive deficits in certain subsets of patients. And the idea is whether uh, tumor treating fields can replace whole brain radiation in this context of preventing uh, tumors from growing out into the brain. So this trial, which is a phase three trial, is known as the METIS trial. And the purpose of the trial is to test the efficacy, the safety, and the neurocognitive outcomes of TT field therapy in patients with one to 10 brain metastasis, secondary to non-sponsored lung cancer. The TT fields are delivered with two pairs of a transducer array that are placed on the scalp, and the patients are urged to wear this for as many hours in the day as possible, as maximally as possible, 14, 16, 18 hours, whatever they can tolerate. They can certainly take it off for a few hours of the day to shower and things of that nature. The placement of the arrays requires that the patients shave their heads, and the transducer arrays are then placed there, so that is one of the issues that the patients have to once or twice a week uh, shave their heads as a consequence of the use of this therapy. The trial is uh, slated to enroll 270 patients who will be randomized one-to-one -to, -one to stereotactic radiosurgery alone or stereotactic radiosurgery followed by TT field therapy. The patients in the control arm may cross over to receive TT field therapy at the time of second intracranial progression because time to second intracranial progression is actually the primary endpoint of this trial. So after that point in time, patients on the control arm can cross over and receive this therapy. It is enrolling patients internationally in the US, in Canada, and in the EU. And the key inclusion criteria are a new diagnosis of at least one operable or two to 10 originally supratentorial, and subsequently the trial was modified to permit infratentorial tumors to also be enrolled. They have to have non-sponsored lung cancer as a primary tumor. And these lesions have to be amenable to stereotactic radiosurgery because the control arm is stereotactic radiosurgery. Then, then there are the usual entry criteria like a good performance status and things of that sort. Patients with a single resectable lesion, that means there's no more measurable disease, or those with a recurrent brain metastasis who had multiple prior lines of therapy, or those with specific actionable mutations like ALK, EGFR, ROS1, BRAF are excluded because these patients have a different biological behavior and they were excluded from the protocol. So the patients receive TT field therapy at 150 kilohertz. This is applied to the brain using the device within seven days of stereotactic radiosurgery. Um, and um, as I mentioned, patients are urged to keep it on for as long as they can tolerate. The study is currently accruing patients. It's continuing to accrue patients. Uh, it's accruing internationally. We don't yet have 
any data, outcomes data to present because the study is still accruing patients. However, the statistical considerations of the study hypothesize that with a sample size of 270 patients, we may be able to detect an increase in time to intracranial progression from 7.7 .7 to 13.4 months, which gives us a hazard ratio of 0.57, which is a pretty substantial hazard ratio. And we would have an 80% power with a two-sided alpha of 0.05 uh, to detect this difference should the trial be positive. There are a whole host of other secondary endpoints that we're looking at, uh, but this is sort of the gist of the trial. The trial did undergo one data monitoring safety committee evaluation in late 2019, and the independent DMC reviewed the data and found no untoward safety issues and recommended study continuation. And that's the status of the trial as of today.